In this video, we will look at dynamic programming and how to use it for a query optimizer. If you are unsure what dynamic programming is about, please first take a look at dynamic programming in general. It's an optimization technique widely used in computer science. And maybe a good starting point for you to understand what dynamic programming is about. Look at how to optimize a factorial, how to compute this one using dynamic programming. There are many videos on that on YouTube, but also if you Google for that, you will quickly find some pointers explaining you the core idea. So here we already look at the special case that is a query optimizer in a relational database system. So what is the situation we're looking at? Let's assume we have a SQL query like that. There was a couple of projections. Here are a couple of joint conditions. As you probably know, you could also write those joint conditions as part of the WHERE clause. However, I separated here to underline that really those are joint conditions and those are simple selections. So what does this mean? What does this query do? Well, basically this is a query like it joins four tables, A, B, D, C. So what this also means is this is just saying that they are joined. It's not saying how they are joined. So this does not imply an order in the query optimizer. The query optimizer can take any order it deems useful in order to execute those joints. This does not imply that A is joined with B first and then the result with D or something like that. That is up to the optimizer to decide. One other option of visualizing what's going on here is the following. We could write this in a table like that. We could say, okay, we have here the relations ABC and here we have DCB. And whenever in the intersection of the columns and the rows, there's a join condition, then we write the join symbol. If not, there's basically a cross product. So for instance, we have a join condition among A and B. Therefore, here we write a join symbol. We have a join condition among D and B. Therefore, we write a join symbol here and we have another join condition among C and D. Therefore, we have to write a join symbol here. Everything else can still be combined. However, only with a cross product. So that symbolizes the relationship of the different tables that take place in this SQL statement. Well, and of course, if you have something like that, you could write this as a graph. So here's an example that's called the join graph. That is the join graph. In a join graph, every table becomes a node, and then you draw edges among those nodes. You draw a yellow edge if you have a join condition specified. As, you, as we see here, we had the join condition. So we have three join conditions here. Therefore, we have to draw three edges, three yellow thick edges here between A and B, B and D, D and C. Again, all other combinations also exist. There, those are those gray shallow edges here. Those are cross products. So it's totally fine to also combine C and B. However, this can only be done using a cross product as also shown here. So that is a join graph for this specific query. And you could also enrich the join graph. You could also say, okay, I also annotate the where clause here, the different filter conditions, and for example, the projections, you could annotate the join conditions in more detail. So I did that here for the join conditions and the where clauses. So here you see the filter on A, we saw it here, it's annotated here, the filter on B and D. And here I also depicted the specific join conditions. That's another variant of a join graph. So the question now is, we already looked in my previous video at the huge search space you have when trying to find out what is the right join order. In this video, we will look at a specific way of determining the join order in a query optimizer. So how would we do that? So one famous technique for doing that is dynamic programming. So what is the core idea of dynamic programming? Well, it's the same as in, in the dynamic programming used in other areas in computer science. You start by computing building blocks, smaller atoms that you combine to molecules, so to say. So here, in the context of a database system, you start computing an optimal plan for each input relation. So you have four input relations in this example. This means you compute the optimal plan, the optimal access plan for each input relation individually. We will come back to that in a moment. And then iteratively, you compute bigger plans 
having more input relations, more input tables. So once you compute it, the optimal plans for single relations, you can combine those to form plans having two inputs and so forth. Eventually, you end up with plans that have four inputs, which happens to be the size of the overall query, you have four tables to, to join. So we will look at an example in a moment, but before doing that, let's revisit two central requirements for the dynamic programming, when dynamic programming makes sense, and those are the following. One requirement is this optimality principle, which means you can combine smaller solutions into bigger solutions. So once you found a plan, a small a, a sub plan, and let's go back to this example. We have A, B, C, and D. And let's assume you found an optimal plan, an optimal sub plan for A and B, and C and D. So this optimality principle says you can combine A and B. So the sub plan for this one, let's call it um, SP1 and this is SP2, and we combine it, we combine SP1 with SP2 into a bigger plan. So this is a plan for four relations, let's call it plan whatever, 42. So optimality principle means that the subplan is optimal. Once you computed that, you know we have an optimal subplan for input relations A and B. You also know that this subplan is optimal with respect to input C and D. And then from that, you can defer an optimal plan using all four input relations by just combining those two plans. So whenever a problem can be decomposed into substructures, into optimal substructures that can then be added up, can then be combined, then you can apply dynamic programming. In the context of relational query optimization, we will see that you have to be very careful with that because you may easily miss the optimal plan if you are not careful in using the substructures in the right way. We will come back to that in a moment. So it's important to be able to decompose a problem into smaller problems, be able to solve the smaller problems in an optimal way and then recombine them. If that is the case, then you can use dynamic programming. The second is you better have overlapping sub problems. So what does that mean? Let's go back to the Curie graph. So we have all these different combinations and in the brute force enumeration, you could easily see that you would try out many of those combinations. So you would try out this one, for example, and you would try out that one. Maybe you would try out um, this one with that one, something like that. So all kinds of combinations and dynamic programming makes a lot of sense in situations where parts of the problem are tried out over and over again. So in dynamic programming, each subproblem problem is only executed once and that is where the big savings stem from. So whenever there's overlap while optimizing something, if certain subproblems are tried out over and over again, then dynamic programming makes a lot of sense. You see those overlapping subproblems if you depict the dependencies. Let's assume we only had three input relations. So what are the different combinations? You could do an A, B join first and then join with C. You could do a B, C join first and then join with A. Or you could do something like A, C. And of course, all of those have to access the individual tables. So this one has to access A and B. And there's a dependency. This one has to access B and C. This one has to access A and C. And here again, if you make a combination in the sense that you say you first access AB, the combination of A and B, and then you combine it with C, then you basically have to go like this. But if you say, okay, you first look at the combination of B and C and then you combine it with A, then you would have something like this. So first B, C, and then here in the little side arrow to A. Or you say, you look at the combination of A and C first, this one, and then combine it with B, then you have something like this. And you see in this already pretty dense graph that you have overlap in the sense that you have for certain nodes in this graph, you have multiple incoming arrows. So basically in dynamic programming, 
each of the nodes is computed only once and then reused for the multiple users. So each incoming error here is a user. And rather than executing every node here, the computation for each node one by one, dynamic programming only executes each node once. So in the context of a relational system, if you want to compute the optimal plan for this one, what we will do in the following is, we first compute the optimal access plan for A. That is the first thing we do. Let's use a different color for that. So we first compute the optimal access plan for this one. Then we compute the optimal access plan for that one. Once we have that, we can compute the optimal access plan for A, B by just combining the two optimal access plans for A and for B. That's adding up the two optimal subplans into a bigger plan. Well, then this cannot be computed because you're still missing C. We need to compute the optimal access plan for C. So we compute C. Once we have the optimal access plan for C, we could also derive the optimal access plan for BC. We could also derive the optimal access plan for AC. And then we can do all the combinations. So A, B combined with C can now be computed or BC combined with A or AC combined with B. So all the possible combinations can be done. It's done in a bottom-up fashion by only computing each node once. That's another way of looking at dynamic programming. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de it has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.